Hi, I'm Katie. And I'm Ryan. I am a stay-at-home mom, so I hang out with Elliot every day, all day. <laughs> I uh, work in computer security for a financial institution. We met in college at the University of Wisconsin Stevens Point. Yeah, we met through a mutual friend, somebody that I went to high school with that was actually uh, going for music education like Katie, so we met through him. I think we started trying a little bit earlier than we expected because we were like, oh, it might take a while, and it didn't. So I was, I was shocked and I was able to kind of surprise him and he was just yeah. His face was just like, are you kidding me? <laughs> she totally surprised me. So it was one of those things where wasn't expecting it at all. When we found out our baby was going to be born early, I think we were both just kind of shocked. It was hard to actually believe because when somebody, when you have no problems at all throughout you know, the first 20 weeks, Everything's just been going perfect. You kind of get into this feeling in your mind that, oh, this is just how it is. This is how it's going to be. It's going to be great. And then as soon as somebody starts saying that there might be something wrong, uh, it it's hard to believe. When I went into labor, I felt defeated. <laughs> like my body failed me. It was really hard because we had just celebrated that day. Uh, they say that 25 weeks is kind of like your cutoff for, they, they say, the viability. And uh, less than 25 weeks, it's hard because they can try to save the baby, but the rates are really low. Having a baby that early, they have the issue of, you know, one, not making it in general. So death is the number one concern that we were worried about. Um, at that age, their lungs aren't fully developed. So breathing is going to be an issue. All those things are all chances, and they actually lay them out percentages to say, Here's the percent chance that your baby will be born and have a extremely bad problem. Uh, here's the percent chance they won't. And like, uh, it's amazing because when you're starting to get to that 25 week point, every single day actually changes the percentages by five to 10%. So when you go from like 24 weeks and six days to 25 weeks, there's some magic that happens where all of a sudden, instead of being 50% chance of survival, it's 60 or 70. So. It's hard though to have somebody tell you those percentages and actually have them mean anything. I guess I thought, oh, I'm gonna have a baby early and it's gonna, it's gonna be small, but we didn't know the risks. They had one of the neonatologists come down and talk mm -hmm. to us. And she came in and I remember just sitting on the bed crying and she just went through heart problems, brain problems, lung problems, probably on oxygen. Mm -hmm. Going probably home on, on oxygen. Going home on oxygen. And that was just, it was so overwhelming. And no matter how much I cried, she just kept going. And then the last thing she wrote was on the top of the paper. And I still have the paper, it says death, and she underlined it. I was in the hospital those first couple days and I can actually look out these windows and see my room that I sat in. I so I'd look out the window and I would see a few people come and go out the front door and I was like, oh, like I've heard of the Ronald McDonald House, but I'm probably never gonna stay there. So it was really funny when the social worker, I think, came and introduced the idea of the Ronald McDonald House. And then I got admitted here or checked in here and I could look from my room and look back across the street at my hospital room. So I kind of felt like I came full circle and now all the wondering I had across the street I could be like, oh, this is what it is inside. We were introduced to Ronald McDonald House through social worker and then also the nurses. Mm -hmm. uh, 
in both the NICU and also on the labor and delivery side, they did talk about it. To be completely honest, I don't remember my first moments at the Ronald McDonald House. I think I was just so overwhelmed with everything going on and trying to recover from a C-section. It's really hard to remember first coming here. I, I think that both of our minds, but especially hers, were not here. This was just a kind of check the box type of thing. We need to we need somewhere I need for her to stay. To sleep. I think the Ronald McDonald House did the most for us by just giving us such a close place to be. If I wouldn't have had this, I don't know if I would have been able to go home because I would have worried what if something was happening to him at night and I needed to get there while well, I'm almost an hour away. Also, I didn't have to send my laundry home with him anymore. If I had a break during the day, I could come back over here, wash clothes, get a home-cooked meal instead of fast food. Yeah, I think that the biggest thing, a place that was close, I, we probably would have rented an apartment, honestly, if this hadn't been available. And that would have been yet another strain on everything that's yeah. already going on. And the proximity to the hospital, the just kind of the safe feeling too, I think, that you had somewhere to go right. that you could close the door and be here, you're still close, but actually just kind of get away. Finally, as far as changing our lives, not really any one person, but coming here to a certain extent. But this has given us a, a, a place that we know that whether we contribute time, money, donations, that it's going to immediately impact people's lives. That's something that we have done yeah. ever since he was born, is just trying to be involved here. I think some of the stuff that I just didn't expect was, like, I don't know, I thought I'd have to go buy my own groceries. The fact that I could just walk into the fridge and take whatever I needed was just, I don't know, not really shocking to me, but just so, so nice. How nice everybody always was. Anytime you walked through the door during the day, if someone was at the desk, they'd ask you how you were doing. And at the time, I think I would probably just say, oh, I'm fine, because I wanted to go back to my room. But so I was very grateful. I wish I would appreciate it. Appreciate the people that work here more when I was here. For everything they provided for us. I think that the world should know about the Ronald, that the Ronald McDonald House exists. I've gone through the drive through at McDonald's and seen the uh, thing where you drop your change, you know, back when people would pay with cash for things. <laughs> and you drop your change in the, the donation box for the Ronald McDonald House and you have no idea what that is. I feel like a lot of people don't know what it is. We didn't really know what it was. So I, th I, I always thought, oh, the Ronald McDonald House, that's for, you know, parents or family with sick kids in the hospital. And I'll never be in that situation. And now that I was in that situation, it is so much more than just a house. I, I think that if people could know the great things that it does and that it is absolutely worthwhile to donate. We were in the hospital for 96 days with Elliot. Well, Elliot was, Elliot in, the was in the hospital for 96, for 96 days. days and came home just a week before his due date. His actual due date was December 31st. Mm -hmm. We got him home. They want, They really worked hard to get him home in time for Christmas. So, which we actually kept a secret. <laughs> yeah, we, we <laughs> didn't tell anybody he was coming home. And then when people wanted to like FaceTime us for Christmas, we were sitting at home with a baby on our lap. 